Hello, welcome to Cryptic Crosswords, a virtual program brought to you by Waterloo Public Library. My name is Jim Bennett, and I am a library assistant at WPL. This is the first virtual program I presented, but I do plan to do more, so keep an eye out for those. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, first, an introduction uh, to cryptic crosswords. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say about them is that they are indeed crosswords, um, which is good because you probably already know how crosswords work. Uh, but they are different in um, some very important ways um, uh, from regular crosswords. So the best way to go about talking about uh, the, the differences is to just look and compare. So there's a, what I call American style because uh, cryptic crosswords are also known as British style crosswords. They were um, invented in Britain and are popular all over the English speaking world. Anyway, so first thing to know about a regular American style crossword is that uh, the clues are synonyms. So that means they are uh, words that mean the same thing or phrases that mean the same thing. Um, or just a straight-up definition of a word, um, or some piece of trivia, like a famous person's name or something like that. Now, in contrast, uh, cryptic crosswords um, include a definition part, which works the same way um, as in a, a regular crossword, but there's also part of the clue that is a cryptic part um, that uses some kind of wordplay. So, moving on. Um, in regular American style crosswords, answers are entered normally. You just figure out the answer and you put it in. But sometimes in a cryptic crossword, uh, there are, there's an extra layer of wordplay where once you figure out the answer, you then have to enter it. Um, it may be scrambled up in a certain way or something. Um, the ones we're going to look at today aren't going to be that complicated, but um, just so you know, people have tried to you know, intensify the difficulty of uh, the cryptic crosswords sometimes by making it so that you, you enter them differently than the way that um, they are when you first come up with them, basically. So in a regular American style crossword, the clue has one meaning, um, usually. This is the surface meaning, the meaning that it has when you read it. Um, However, in cryptic crosswords, um, they often have a surface meaning as well, but that's a distraction away from the way that um, you actually get to the answer. So let's uh, move on to an example. I think that'll make things a lot clearer. Um, so first example, the clue is record is set in Washington. And like a regular crossword, it tells us that the answer has four letters. So the surface meaning here looks like it has something to do with a world record being set. Like I say on the slide, you can imagine it being like an Olympic record or something in a sport. Um, what the actual answer would be in a regular crossword, though, it's kind of hard to say um, if you just take the whole thing um, as one phrase. Um, but it doesn't matter because it's, that's a distraction for the cryptic crossword. Um, and so in order to solve the clue, you have to figure out, first thing you have to do, or try to do anyway, is figure out what part of the clue is the actual definition, just like in a regular crossword, and what part is the, uh, the wordplay, the cryptic part. So for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, let tell you. So the, uh, the definition is the word record. So if this was just a regular crossword, um, record would be the, uh, the only thing in the clue, it would just say record, and you would come up with something that means the same thing as the word record. Uh, the cryptic wordplay is the rest of the clue. So is set in Washington tells us something about how to get to the answer. That tells us how to get to the uh, the record is set part. Uh, excuse me, the record part. So um, it has to mean the same thing as record, 
And since um, it has four letters, we have to figure out how to get there um, to make it four letters. So within the cryptic part or the wordplay part of a cryptic crossword, um, there's something that people call an indicator, which is kind of like the instructions that tell you how to get to the answer. Um, in this case, set in is the indicator, tells you what to do. So uh, basically, um, what we have to figure out is um, something that means Washington, and then we're going to take the word is, or even just the two letters, is, if you want to think of it that way, and sandwich them between um, two other letters. When it has to be two other letters because the answer is only four letters long. So what that means is that um, we have to think of something that is uh, two letters long and means the same thing as Washington. So at this point, um, what I recommend that you do is uh, just take a minute or two. You can pause the video. That's one of the advantages of this kind of uh, virtual programming is that you can um, press pause and take as much time as you want. You can uh, have a cup of coffee. Think about it. Um, what are what is what has two letters and means the same thing as Washington? So um, I'm going to give you a moment just to think about it. You can pause the video and then come back here in a second. Okay, so everybody has had a few moments to think about um, what has two letters and means the same thing as Washington. And uh, before I give you the answer, I just want to say that. Uh, I hope this does give everybody um, something to do while you're at home. Many of us are spending more time at home right now than we would normally. I mean, this is a good, fun, and you know, kind of you know, stimulating way to spend your time if you like crosswords already. Anyway, so what has two letters? It means the same thing as Washington. The answer is D.C. So what they mean by Washington is not Washington State, but the city Washington, D.C or really I guess the little district Washington DC. So what we have to do then is take the word is or really just the two letters IS and put them inside of DC and that gives us the answer which is disk. Disk is a four letter word that means record. So in this case uh, record um, the definition it refers to a a a audio record or like like a, um, a an LP or something, not a record as in the fastest person to do this or that. Um, so that's how they work. Let's uh, go ahead and try a different one, one that is uh, very similar in its structure. So the clue is half even in elation gives height. Now this one, the surface meaning doesn't really make sense. Um, if you were just given this by itself, probably would say what in the world are you talking about? Um, but that's okay because this is, this, is a, this is a cryptic crossword so you don't, it doesn't have to necessarily mean anything. I prefer the ones that have surface meanings because to me they're kind of more fun but anyway so um, first thing you want to do is Try to figure out what the definition part of the clue is. Um, typically, it's at the beginning or the end. So in that case, uh, you know, our choices are half, probably not half even, because that doesn't really make sense. Um, but half or height, one or the other, is probably the definition. Um, I'm going to just go ahead again and tell you which part is the definition. The uh, definition is um, height. So we're looking for a nine letter word that means height and this works structurally the same way as the other first example in that we're going to be taking something, some, some uh, word, part of a word or letters and um, sandwiching or wedging them inside um, some other letters or a word. So in, that, in this case that, that means that uh, we're going to have a very similar indicator so in the previous clue, the indicator was uh, set in, and in this case, we just have in. 
So we're looking for a nine letter word that means height and we are going to take something and stick it into something else to get the answer basically. So take a minute to think about it again. Um, you know, uh, take as much time as you need and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so we're back and we've been thinking about a nine letter word that means the same thing as height and the word elation since it is after the word in is the word that we're going to be um, putting something into. So um, what are we putting into elation to get a word that means height? Um, in this case you might think of the answer before you even think of how to get there and that happens a lot. Um, so you might be thinking, oh well the word elevation kind of mean, means height more or less. Um, so maybe that's the answer. And in fact, um, that is um, the answer. And here, as you can see on the slide, is how we get to it. So we need the letters E and V to sandwich into the word elation to get elevation. And where do those come from? Well, EV is half of the word even. So here you have um, a good example of the kinds of wordplay that happen in cryptic crossword puzzles. So half even is EV. It could have been EN, or it really could have been VE as well. Um, but um, taking EV and putting it in elation is what gives us height. So uh, hopefully you're finding these enjoyable. Um, fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, I don't know, depending on your perspective, um, there are many kinds of clues. Um, in cryptic uh, crosswords. This kind of clue uh, that we, these two kinds of clues that we've just seen are uh, what you might think of as container clues in that um, you're putting one word into another or a part of a word into another. Uh, but like I said there are many many different kinds um, and so what we're going to do is uh, before we uh, try a bunch of uh, clues is go through all the different kinds of crossword clues. So second part of our uh, program. First kind is what I'm calling double definitions. So as you can see um, on the marble uh, plaque um, double def definitions are clues that actually don't use wordplay, uh, which is maybe a little bit confusing since I've already said that's what they do. But then again, you can think of it as a kind of wordplay, I suppose. Um, in any case, uh, the way that they work is that they um, rely on or they use words that are spelled the same but have different meanings. So two words that um, look exactly the same and sound the same when you say them, most likely, maybe not, we'll see, um, but have different meanings. Okay, so let's look at an example, usually the best way to see how these work. So here's our clue, lie low on the animal skin. Okay, it's got four letters, the answer, and I made myself some tea, I need to take the bag out here. So. Okay, so uh, it, it makes sense on the surface, which is fun. I think it's fun when they make sense on the surface, um, but as a whole, it wouldn't really make sense as a traditional or regular crossword clue. Uh, so the way that this works is that we're going to take the two parts or the two halves of the clue, lie low and animal skin, and find a word that uh, means both. Um, spelled exactly the same way, and in this case, uh, pronounced the same way. Um, so obviously one is a, a verb and one is a noun, uh, which is how a lot of these work. They play on um, words that are spelled the same but are a different part of speech. So go ahead and take a minute, uh, think about this one, uh, and then I'll come back and tell you what the uh, answer is. Okay, so um, 
The answer is hide. Um, it means to lie low, and it also means animal skin. So there's lots of examples of uh, these kinds of uh, words. And you just have to keep this in mind when you're looking at a cryptic crossword. Uh, that's, um, you know, the first thing you do is look for the definition part. Um, but sometimes all there are are definition parts. So there isn't a cryptic part necessarily. There's just um, two different uh, definitions of the same word. Okay, and that's why they're called double definitions. So continuing on, here's another example. Uh, cowboy leggings for the fellows. Are you? If you were a cowboy, you'd probably say for the fellows. Five letters is the answer. Uh, the answer has five letters in it, I should say. So this one works the same way as the other one, and now that you know exactly how they work, you know how to, how to do this kind. So we're looking for a five-letter word that means cowboy leggings. It also means fellows. So take just a minute, and we will, uh, or I will, come back and uh, tell you the answer. Okay, so uh, the answer is chaps. Chaps are things that you put on your legs. They are leg protectors, I guess, though I'm not an expert, I'm not a cowboy. Um, but chaps are also fellows. Or, uh, guys, or bros, or whatever you want to say. Okay, so that's an example, a couple examples of double definitions. Let's move on to something um, called hidden words. This is a kind of clue that uses indicators. So this is more like the very first examples that I showed you, where there are indicators, and thus there's a kind of wordplay going on. But hidden words um, clues are um, the indicators are things like hiding or holding um, or within or you know encompassing or shielding you know um, those kinds of words anything that implies that one thing is inside or behind or covered up by another thing those kinds of words indicate that we're dealing with uh, hidden words and those words are inside the clue hiding somewhere okay so first example fruit seized in rap ricotta again not my favorite clue because it doesn't really have a a very good surface meaning like what what does that even mean i don't know um, but the indicator in this case is seized as in something you're holding on to something so it's inside um, and the definition is is fruit so um, Take a minute and see if you can figure out um, uh, a fruit or something that means fruit that is hidden inside the clue. And I'll be right back. Okay, um, so hopefully some 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 of you um, figured this one out. But the um, Answer is uh, apricot, or apricot, I guess, could be pronounced either way. But it is a fruit, and it is seven letters, and it is found hiding in plain sight right there, the end of the word wrap and the beginning of the word ricotta, which is kind of cheese. But if you um, see something that just doesn't make sense, that's kind of a weird thing like that, like half even in the other clue, which doesn't really make sense, then that's a good indication that um, there's some kind of wordplay going on. Uh, like I've said, in my preference, I like it when it's not obvious that that's happening. I, I want it to have a really good surface meaning, um, just for for the for the sake of fun. But anyway, let's go on and do a uh, second example of these hidden words. So six letters long, and the clue is veiled listener gyrates with them. Now this one, you know, it has a surface meaning. Um, it's a little bit, um, it's a sort of absurdity. So you'd have to, you can imagine to yourself um, the scene it's setting. The indicator word in this case is veiled. So a veil uh, covers 
something up. And the definition is vim. So this is a good, you know, crossword word. It's not a word that you would probably use day to day in your life. Um, I can't imagine myself walking down the sidewalk and saying, you know, I have a lot of vim today. But uh, it's a good, you know, sort of thesaurus word that is nice um, in a crossword. So if you like crosswords, you, or if you don't, you might already know this word. Anyway, that's the definition. So go ahead and take a minute and see if you can uh, figure out uh, what the answer is. It's right there in front of you. It's, it's hidden within other words. So take a second and see if you can find it. Alrighty, we're back. Um, and we're looking for a six-letter word that means them and is hidden in the rest of the clue. Um, it kind of has to be um, hidden within the, the words listener gyrates. Because veiled is our indicator, and that's all that we have left. I guess it could be with, but uh, what we've got here is uh, energy is the answer. So there it is, in red, underlined, at the end of listener, at the beginning of gyrates. Vim means energy. It's six letters long. Um, so, you know, to me, I think the hardest part with these uh, cryptic crosswords is just figuring out what the definition part is and um, figuring out what the indicator is so you know what kind of clue it is. You can get books of these that will give you the cryptic crossword, uh, but will also give you uh, the regular version of the crossword with just the definition. So if you get really stumped, you can look and find out what part is the definition, and that will uh, really help. So I recommend those kinds of books if you're, gonna, if you're going to do one. Let's move on to the next category. So these are um, what I'm calling initial letters. Clues of this type um, have indicators like initial or start or beginning that um, tell you that um, you're only going to be taking the, the first letters of a string of words. So you've probably seen in a, you know, on TV, maybe in, de in a detective show or somewhere where someone is, uh, you know, trying to tell someone something in secret in a in, in a coded way, and they do that by um, just using the first letters of a bunch of words. So that, that's that's the basic idea. Here's the first example. Uh, so the clue is take up an offer starting with a carbon copy each person took six letters. Okay. Uh, surface meaning is kind of complicated. It does make sense. I mean, I guess you could imagine um, this as um, part of a sentence. But um, the part that is the indicator is just like in the definition, the word starting with uh, tells you that um, you should be looking at just the first, just the letters that the word start with, so starting with. The definition is take up an offer. So what word is six letters long? It means take up an offer, and you can find it in the clue by looking at the first letters of a string of words after where it says starting with. So take a moment, see if you can figure it out. Um, I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so the answer is accept. And here you can see the, uh, uh, the underlined in red letters are the first letters of the words, and they spell out the word accept, which means to take up an offer. Let's do another example of this kind of clue. So the clue is begin when Ranger issues Tom with a court order. And it's four letters long. And I can just give you another helpful hint here. Uh, when you see a uh, personal name like Tom, very likely it's got, a, it's got something to do with the wordplay. Because otherwise, why why the word Tom? Why not Joe or Bill or you know, Jim? 
or whatever. Um, so the indicator part, since we're talking about initial letter um, clues, is begin. That tells us that, and then this is kind of because it's it's a uh, it's a little bit harder than starts with. Literally tells you that it starts with, but here it's just the word begin by itself. Uh, it tells you that we are going to be taking the first letters or the letters that words begin with. And the definition part is a court order. So we're looking for a four-letter word that means a court order, and it's found in the clue um, as the first letters of a series of words. Okay, so I will uh, give you just a moment and come back, and uh, you can pause the video, like I've said, um, and see if you can figure it out. Okay, so uh, before I give you the answer to this one, I just want to say that um, I'm still continuing to give you the um, definitions and the, uh, the indicators because these are all examples. But just, just just so you know, when you do these, you're not gonna, you're not even going to know what kind of clue it is. You're not going to know what the definition is, uh, what part is the definition. You're not going to know uh, which part is the wordplay. And that's where the fun comes in, is just you know, thinking of all the different options and trying to decode uh, the answer. But they are easier when you're doing the actual crossword because you might have already figured out a clue that crosses the word you're looking for and tells you that, say, the third letter is uh, I or A. Okay, but the answer here is writ. A writ is a court order. The words when, ranger, issues, tom uh, start with those letters. And like I said, because the personal name Tom is so specific, it's a good clue that um, it has something to do with the wordplay, because why Tom and not something else? Okay, so moving on to the next kind of clue, which are deletions or omissions. Now these are, they're similar to the hidden words, because you're taking a part of what you already have. Um, but deletions, um, instead of just looking for it within a word or, or words, um, it uses indicators like um, not started, um, short, like it says on the side, slide, or uh, cut. Um, those kinds of words that indicate that something is being removed or taken away uh, from a word or, um, well, really, it's a word um, that it will work with. So let's try an example. So first example, uh, uh, providence is in short supply. Okay, so this is a deletion or omission clue. So the indicator in this case is short. Uh, this, this might seem a little bit difficult if you don't already know it's a deletion or omission. Um, but the, the more practice you have with these, you, you tend to pick out the indicator words quicker, the, you know, the more practice you have. And so see that word short, immediately think, well, something is being cut short in, uh, in this clue. Um, the answer, or not the answer, but the definition part is supply. So we need to cut off some letters from one of the other words uh, to get something that means supply. The answer is seven letters long, so the word that we're cutting away from has to be pretty long to begin with, so we don't have a whole lot of options here. So give it a moment, think about it, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so we are looking for something that means um, supply, and it's seven letters long, and we're going to need to uh, chop off some letters from, in this case, it's going to have to be providence, because it's the only word long enough to be left with seven letters. So the answer is provide which means the same thing as supply, um, and we get it by chopping off or shortening the word by three letters. Um, so also keep in mind that with these deletions or omissions, uh, you're really just taking either the beginning or the end of a word off. Um, there's not rearranging necessarily. Um, you're not looking for something that's inside a word. It's just the beginning or the end is taken away. 
So let's try a, another one. So here's the example. First off closes small houses, and it's four letters. So the first thing is that uh, the indicator is first off, which means that you're taking off the beginning of a word. Um, it could be just the first letter, but it doesn't have to be. It could be more than that. Um, and then um, there's a definition part. The definition part is small houses. Okay. So what that means is that we need to take something off of the word closes to get something that means small houses. And that presents a bit of a difficulty, I'd say, uh, because no matter what I take off the word closes, I can't come up with something that means small houses. You can sit and try it and think about it, but it will not work. So what this means is, like the earlier example of the half-even inhalation clue, where you had to take half of the word even, EV, and put it in elation. So cutting in the word even in half was already a, a, like a preliminary procedure. So there's a, there was a kind of nesting of wordplay. Same thing goes here. Um, in this case, we're going to have to find a synonym for the word closes that we can take off the beginning of and will mean small houses. So these nested clues are considerably harder um, than the straightforward ones. Um, but part of the fun of these cryptic crosswords is that they, um, they're hard. And they don't require a lot of knowledge of you know, um, vocabulary or trivia in like the way that the other crosswords do. But so think of... Um, you know, a word that means uh, closes, and if you cut the front off, take off the first letter, it means small houses. So I'll give you just a minute to do that. Okay, so um, you now hopefully you gave yourself enough time to figure it out. There's no rush whatsoever. Uh, we're just hanging out. You can pause me, come back tomorrow after you've got it figured out, sit on the couch and think about it. Uh, I'm going to take a sip of tea. So the answer is uh, huts. Huts are small houses. And you get huts by cutting off the first letter of the word shuts, which means closes. I have a feeling that some people might at this point be thinking, oh wow, that's ridiculous. Um, and that's kind of the point of these, is that they are ridiculous and they are, um, if, if your expectation of a crossword is that you're going to be able to sit down and do them really quickly, um, th these are going to be really hard because they, do, they take a lot of time, a lot of thinking um, to get to the answer sometimes. Um, but again, they're not for everybody, but if you like that kind of thing, that kind of challenge, I think they're really fun. So let's um, move on to the next kind of clue. These are homophones. So homophone means, you know, sounds the same. These are clues that uh, use indicators like uh, sounds like. And in fact, the indicators for homophones, really any kind of word that has anything to do with speaking or you know, producing the sound of a word um, is an indicator for a homophone. So as usual, I think an example will probably work best to show how this works. So the clue is permeable, you'd say. Pour us a drink. I can imagine the context in which someone might say that, but um, it will be a, a very specific context. So the surface meaning is not so great here. Um, but what we're looking for is um, a homophone. How do we know that? Because it says you'd say. You'd say you're speaking, you're producing the sound of a word. Um, and the uh, definition part is permeable. So we're looking for a word that means permeable, is six letters long, and that if we read the clue, we will have already said the word because it sounds like, or sounds the same as, uh, another, another part of the clue. So uh, take a minute, see if you can find that word. Uh, it, it, 
be clear that it isn't necessarily going to be spelled the same way. All it has to do is uh, be pronounced the same way as a word or words in the clue. So go ahead and take a minute and think about this one. Okay, so we're looking for a word that means permeable. You'd say, pour us a drink. So the answer is pour us. Now, pour us means um, having lots of little holes or um, you know, being permeable. Um, so these are fun. Let's try another one. Uh, life of your ex is tense, you say. Nine letters. So in this case, um, the indicator is the same. It's you say. So saying something out loud. Um, and the definition is life. So it, sometimes these definitions are slightly a bit of a stretch, but it works. So what part of this, um, if you say it out loud, often it helps, I think, when I do these, is to close my eyes and just say the words until I, you know, can um, can hear the word that we're looking for because that's uh, you know we're dealing with the way things sound. Uh, sometimes in this case, even looking at the clue will tell you where it is. So, looking for a nine-letter word that means life, and is a homophone of some part of the clue. So just take a minute and see if you can, or however long you want. Don't let me rush you, uh, and see if you can figure it out. All right, so we are looking for a nine-letter word that means life and sounds like part of the clue. In this case, it's uh, right in front of us because it's spelled the same. The answer is existence, and it's basically the combination of those three words, X is tense. So it's a, this is a good example because the uh, previous one was, okay, well, it was two words that... Um, sound the same as another word. In this case, it's three words. It could be one word. Um, it's, you know, however, the person that made the crossword wants it to work. So, like I said earlier, this is a little bit of a stretch um, as far as the synonym goes, but, you know, even regular crosswords are like that sometimes. Um, so here, uh, existence is supposed to be a synonym for life, um, which works, sort of, but there are things that exist that aren't alive, like rocks, right? Um, but it's okay. Sometimes crosswords have to stretch things a little bit. You can't have perfect definitions all the time. Let's move on to the uh, next category. These are what I'm calling reversals. They are exactly what they sound like. You're taking a series of letters, whether it's one word or more than one word, and you are writing them backwards to get the answer. Now the, uh, the clue, or the, excuse me, the indicator, is going to be something like uh, reverse, backwards, um, turn about, turn around, upside down. Um, depending on if the clue is going to be entered vertically or horizontally, sometimes they would say for you know bottom up, which means you know write it from the bottom up if it's a vertical one. Let's see an example here. So first example is a bridge for topsy turvy naps. Okay, I guess it means something on the surface. Uh, the answer is four letters long, and the indicator in this case is a little bit um, unusual. Topsy turvy is our indicator, which means upside down, basically. Um, people who make these crosswords have to get creative sometimes because you don't want to, you know, use exactly the same indicators all the time. It would kind of take away the fun. So what we're doing is we're looking for something that means um, bridge, which is the definition. So. Take something in the clue and write it backwards, and it should mean bridge, or you know, more or less mean bridge. So take a minute and see uh, if you can figure this one out. Okay, so the word that we're going to uh, write backwards is the one right after topsy turvy, which makes sense because that's how the wordplay works. We're gonna, you know, make the word naps topsy-turvy. So topsy-turvy naps or backwards naps, upside down naps are a span. 
a span is a bridge, or really a bridge is a kind of span, I guess you could say. So moving on to a, another example of reversals. So the clue is shock will turn you nuts. And this one is good surface meaning because you can definitely, um, you know, be disturbed by some kind of shock, definitely. Can happen. In this case, the indicator is turn. Uh, like, so like I said, turn, turn around, um, about. Those are good indicators for reversals. So the definition in this case is a shock. So we're looking for a four-letter word that means shock, and you get it by writing something in the clue backwards. So take a minute, see if you can figure this one out. Okay, so uh, the word nuts backwards is stun, which means shock. So that one works very well, I think. Shock and stun. Um, in this case, stun is a very it is a specific kind of shock. Because you could have a different kind of shock. You could just be shocked, um, you know, mentally or emotionally. Stun could also mean that, but it kind of implies a more physical, like being stunned by electricity or something. But no need to get that deep into it. Shock means stun. That's how it works. That's the answer. So let's move on to. Another clue, kind of clue, these are anagrams, and if you know uh, about anagrams, um, you know that what they are are words that use the same words, excuse me, the same letters as another word, but are jumbled or mixed up or rearranged in order. So these in particular, these are common uh, kinds of clues, and there are lots and lots of indicators for them. Um, you can find giant lists if you would like online that tell you all the different um, possible words they cannot possibly be exhaustive of course but examples are things like altered or disordered um, so we'll see a few of these here in the examples so here's the first one okay farm building for shredded bran surface meaning um, could make sense you could have an entire building on your farm dedicated to shredded bran and that could be a thing that you do for some reason. Um, the indicator word here is shredded. It just means that you're taking something and chopping it up um, and in this case rearranging it. So often the indicators for anagrams are, you know, they're, they're kind of violent. They, they, you're, you're mixing up something or rearranging things, so you're cutting it up into pieces, right? So the um, definition part of this clue is farm building. So we're going to take uh, one part of the answer, this is four letters, so a four letter word, and rearranging it to mean farm building. So take just a minute, or however long you want, and uh, see if you can figure it out. Okay, so I hope this one was um, not too hard for people. So the only four letter word that we can shred up is the word brand. And um, rearranging those letters, you get the word uh, barn, which is a farm building. And as you can see, I, what I've tried to do is uh, actually show the process of rearranging the letters there on the slide. That uh, makes sense. Let's try another one. So here's the clue. Stay in mad rationality. Okay, so the indicator word is uh, mad, and so this means, uh, you know, really this it means crazy, the kind, or, you know, mad to mean upset or crazy, uh, not angry necessarily, um, and the answer, or excuse me, the definition is rationality, and we're looking for six letters. So that only leaves a little, that only leaves the word stay in as a, a what need to be jumbled. Um, so we're going to try and jumble up the words stay in to mean something that means the same thing as rationality. We know that that's going to work, it's got six letters. So take just a moment now, 
and uh, see if you can figure it out. Okay, so uh, we're taking the word stay in and jumbling them up uh, to mean something that um, means the same thing as rationality. Um, the answer is sanity. And so hopefully everybody is doing well, uh, maintaining their sanity right now. Some people are uh, really enjoying um, if you are staying at home. Some people are not, but if you are, um, they're enjoying their time. Um, some people are not, but uh, hopefully this uh, will give you, this program will give you something to do um, that might help you pass the time. Anyway, moving on um, to the next kind of clue. And hopefully this isn't too overwhelming. Uh, I know there are lots of different kinds of clues. Uh, but I will be posting a link uh, at the end of this video that will give you this entire PowerPoint and some other material that will help you, help you um, you remember all of these things. So if you're tr if you're going to try some, I would recommend um, even finding a book or something that um, is for beginners in cryptic crosswords that will um, teach you how to do them. And I also I recommend if you can find an American book. Uh, these are not as popular in America. Uh, if you can find a Canadian uh, book, um, probably better than using one that's from Australia or Britain. I have a book from Australia, and uh, sometimes there are clues that don't make sense to uh, Americans because we don't know the same things or use the same words in the same way. Um, so it can be hard. Uh, there are some magazines that do print these in America. Um, I know that Harper's has uh, Harper's Magazine has done it for a long time. I think um, New Yorker is has started printing these um, again. They stopped and now they've started again. Of course, those aren't going to be instructional. They're just going to be the crosswords without any help. Um, so I do recommend finding something that can help you get started um, with them. I mean, you could use this the PowerPoint um, or this video as help. Hopefully that would be enough. Anyway, I uh, don't want to waste too much time. Let's move on to the next clue type, which is alternate letters. So this is a lot like the clue type where you're starting with or beginning with the first letters of a series of words. In this case, we are going to be taking every other letter of a word or series of words. Um, so the indicators are often something like odd or even, um, letting us know that we're taking every other or every second letter. Uh, so let's look at an example. Here's the first one. So the clue is not even as part of new protective garment. Okay, so even is the uh, indicator here. Um, it is telling us that we're taking every other letter. Um, now, it could be literally the even letters. It could be the second, the fourth, the sixth, and so on. It doesn't have to be. Um, the uh, definition here is protective garment. So we are looking for, you know, every other letter does it have to start at the beginning of a word? It can start in the middle of a word. Um, but you know, after even, look for um, a word that can be spelled by taking every other letter, and that means uh, protective garment. So I'll give you a moment to try that, or however long you want. So take your time. Okay. So hopefully uh, some of you were able to um, find the word apron. In this case, it starts um, with the first letter, and then we are skipping letters uh, to get the word apron. So moving on to the next sample. The clue is encourage odd amateur rogue. On the surface, it means something definitely, but I'm not sure how you would get a definition from the whole thing. Um, but the word odd is our indicator here. And it's four letters long, is the answer. And um, why don't I uh, not give you the definition this time? So when you're trying to figure out what part is the definition, you're going to usually look at the beginning and the end of the clue. So in this case, it's either the word encourage or amateur rogue. 
So if you're trying to figure it out, you might say to yourself, well, which one of these is going to have, is going to be relatively easy to come up with a definition for? So the word encourage is, you know, it's a verb. It's a common word. Uh, there's lots of synonyms for it. Uh, amateur rogue is a very specific thing, very specific noun. Um, I'm not sure if there's a single word that means amateur rogue. I don't know. Oh, I don't think so. So you're picking from those two, and then within the other one that you didn't choose as the definition, um, you're going to go see if you can find something that means, um, let's say you're looking for something that means encourage within the, uh, the words amateur rogue or vice versa. So um, take your time, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so hopefully you were able to uh, find the word urge embedded within uh, amateur rogue. So I guess that's it, it is kind of like hidden words, but they're hidden um, not as a whole word, uh, like we saw like energy uh, from before, um, or apricot, which were you know whole but hidden within other words. In this case, they are, uh, you're taking every other letter, um, and so they're hidden in a way, but in a different way. So let's move on to our next uh, kind of clue. These are combined synonyms. And these are kind of like the first clue type that we talked about, the, um, the double definitions. In this case, um, we're using multiple synonyms um, to create a new word. So the, uh, well, let's just look at it. I think it'll really help just looking at it. So, um, frighten off men with cleansing substances. So in this case, looking for a 10 letter word and the definition is, well, let's just think about it. So it could be frighten Frighten off, frighten off men, probably too specific to be the definition. Um, substances could be the definition. Um, cleansing substances could be the definition. So those are our, our options. The reason I said these are similar to the double definitions is that there really isn't a, an indicator word. Or there's no there's no indicator that tells you what to do because what we're doing is combining synonyms to get another synonym basically so I uh, will just go ahead and tell you that the definition part is cleansing substances and so what we're going to need to do is find a word that means the same thing as frighten off and a word that means the same thing as men stick them together the new thing means cleansing substances. So take your time, gotta be 10 letters, um, and see if you can uh, figure it out. So I'll give you as much time as you need. Okay, so this one hopefully was fun. Uh, these are, I, I think that this kind of clue is uh, particularly uh, enjoyable. Um, once you figure out that that's the kind of clue it is. Um, the answer is detergents. And so as you can see with my little arrows on the on the slide here, um, deter is to frighten off. That, that's a good synonym. And men or gent are gents. Men are the same thing as gents. Uh, take these two words, put them together, you get a third word that means something completely different. It means clean, cleansing substances. Uh, detergents are cleansing substances. So kind of fun. Uh, the hard part is, like I've said, uh, just determining that that's the kind of clue that you have. Um, if you're sitting here and you're looking for indicators, you might say, well, off could mean a um, emission or a deletion from a word. So taking something off something else, I mean, that might throw you off for a minute. Um, cleansing, I'm not sure what kind of indicator that would be. Um, but in, but in this case, there is no indicator, so uh, kind of tricky. Let's try another one. So now that we know how they work, hopefully we can figure it out um, easier.
So the clue is imitation stone is a national emblem. So if you're going to try and figure out what the definition is, um, like I said, it's going to be at the beginning of the end, probably. Uh, so it could be imitation, um, imitation stone. Uh, and I can imagine that there could be a kind of like fool's gold, maybe, as an imitation stone or something like that. Um, it could be emblem or national emblem to be the definition. Um, you have eight letters long. So we do know that this is a combined synonym, which means that we maybe we're combining synonyms that mean imitation and stone together to mean a national emblem. Or maybe we're taking synonyms that mean national and emblem and putting them together to mean imitation stone. Those are our options, really, since we know it's a combined synonym. So take a minute and, uh, and give it a go. Um, take as much time as you need. I'm going to sip my tea for a little bit and come back here in a second. Okay, so uh, maybe some of you came up with it. Maybe some of you um, have been stumped for a long time. It just, you know, part of the fun with these is getting angry when you find out the answer. So um, let's see what we got. Okay, so the answer is shamrock. Um, an imitation is a sham, a stone is a rock. Put the two together, you get a third thing that's completely different, shamrock. Uh, a shamrock is a national emblem for Ireland, I think is the, um, what they're going for here. Alrighty, so let's move on. We have exhausted all the main types of uh, clues. There probably could be others. I know that there are others. Um, people are probably inventing new ones every day, maybe not every day, but they are inventing them, coming up with different things. So you just have to get creative sometimes. And trying these out. So let's try some and we'll try them from scratch. So what that means is that you will not know what kind of clue it is. You will also not know what part is the definition and what part is the cryptic wordplay part. So here's an example. Marsh grass upset the deer and it's four letters. So the way these are going to work is I'm going to give you some time and I'm going to um, gradually uh, give you more information. So we'll start off with just the clue. You can pause it, try to figure it out. If you get completely stumped and don't want to keep trying, let the video play and I will give you a clue. And um, so I'll tell you uh, the definition, I'll tell you the indicator, and then finally I'll tell you the answer. But you can pause at any point in that process. So here we go. Marsh grass upset the deer. Uh, take, take as much time as you need. And then I will uh, give you the first clue. I guess I shouldn't say clue because you already have a clue. Maybe I'll give you the, the clue for the clue. Alrighty, so hopefully you paused the video uh, as much as you needed and thought about this. Let's see what the answer is. It is read. And I'm going to go ahead and let that play again so you can all see these my fancy little animations. Uh, the word deer is written backwards to be read. Uh, the indicator is upset, uh, which is an indicator for um, reversal, or you can think of it as an anagram, because reversal is basically a kind of anagram. Okay, so let's uh, go to our next one. So hopefully you're having fun with these. Um, if you want, you know, bring in, um, you know, everybody that you're, you know, with at the moment. Um, see if they can figure it out, show them how it works. Uh, 
let, let them try. These are these, these are fun. They're meant to be fun. Let's do another one. Okay. So uh, dog never arranged to be ruled. Eight letters. So again, I will um, go away and reveal clues um, periodically after um, you know a few seconds or so, and then come back with the answer. Okay, so time for the answer. The answer is governed, which is a uh, definition of uh, to be ruled. And this is an anagram. And the indicator is arranged, which means that we're taking the, the words dog never and rearranging them into the word governed. So one thing that can help with these is that you see the answer is supposed to be eight letters. Um, and so if you see arranged, then you will have to decide, uh, you know, what needs to be arranged, what needs to be jumbled. Um, and since the answer has to be eight letters, the thing that's to be jumbled should start off with eight letters, right? So dog never has eight letters. Um, so it makes sense to jumble that one up. Um, if you try to jumble up, um, to be ruled wouldn't works too many letters right uh, be ruled not enough okay so let's move on to the next one all righty so reached consensus with a silver reed so before we uh before i let you go on this one uh this is hard and it will require some preliminary steps um some wordplay before the wordplay, just so you know. So take as much time as you want. Um, if you get totally frustrated, I'll give you clues um, and then the answer here in a little bit. Okay, so uh, as you can see in uh, the clues, this will require you to replace the word silver with uh, an abbreviation. And so this is, um, hopefully I've been kind of slowly introducing more and more frustrations uh, so that you're not totally overwhelmed. But sometimes things get replaced with other things and they get done, uh, they get replaced uh, very freely in these cryptic crosswords. Um, often they're abbreviations um, or abbreviations stand in for a, a word. In this case, we are replacing the word silver uh, with something. And uh, so let's see what the answer is. The answer is agreed, which is six letters. And it means reached consensus. That's the definition. Um, so in this case, it's basically, it's a combined synonyms, except one is replacing with an abbreviation and the other one is just the same word. So read uh, doesn't have a synonym with it. It's just uh, changing the word silver to AG, which is its um, that silver symbol on the um, periodic table of elements. So yeah, kind of frustrating, kind of, but that's the fun, I think, or hopefully, because um, if you can figure it out, um, then you'll you'll be happy, but you'll have to be kind of annoyed that that's what it took, um, and that's kind of fun. Let's try another one. Oh, I guess I have more um, animations. Okay, so here's another example. Maybe for each of the beheaded chaps. Okay, so just go for it. Take as much time as you want.
Okay, so the answer here is perhaps. And this uh, is tricky again. Um, I'm trying to make them trickier as we go along. The indicator is beheaded. And this, so this is a deletion or omission indicator. It means we're taking something off of something else. In this case, we are beheading the word chaps by taking off the top or the first letter, the letter C's, to get haps. Haps is only part of the answer. And so we're also having to um, do a, uh, what more or less amounts to a, again, a uh, combined synonym. So for each of is per, and so we put per and haps together to get perhaps, which means maybe. Um, in this case, haps doesn't mean anything by itself. It's the result of a, um, a nested piece of wordplay. Um, so uh, seven letters. Hopefully um, everybody uh, enjoyed this one. You uh, had some options. Uh, the you know chaps or maybe were good um, options for definition. Um, beheaded chaps, probably not the definition. Um, I'm not sure what that would be. Not one word. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Oh, I've got more animations. Okay, those are fun. And then we will uh, take the haps and uh, you know plop it up there. All right. Got a little bit of animation happy in the PowerPoint. Here's our next uh, example. So shrouds shrouds arrive at restored playhouses. So let's go through the process really quickly together. That might be helpful at this point. Something has to be the definition. Uh, definition is usually at the beginning or the end. So it could be shrouds. Um, could be playhouses, could be the definition. And then we're looking for an indicator. Um, most likely we have an indicator. Uh, writhe could be an indicator. It could mean maybe an anagram, but, but it's, that will be a stretch. Um, shrouds could be an indicator that work, that would work in a way similar to veiled right, you know, that we had earlier. So give it a go, and I'll give you some clues, and I'll be back in a moment. Alrighty, so let's see what the answer is. Definition is playhouses. And uh, shroud is an indicator for uh, hidden words. So the answer is theaters, uh, which is right there in, inside the words right at restored. Now the spelling of theaters is the, um, you know, the more fancy way. Uh, the, the book I got this from is uh, from a place that would tend to spell that word that way all the time, um, like here, which not all the time we spell it that way. But you know it's got to be spelled that way because it's got to be, it's already in the clue, and so you just spell it the way that it's in the clue, right? Okay. So continuing on, here's a, another clue. Uh, possesses odd low wines. Okay. I included this one because it's a little bit tricky in terms of the indicator. Uh, so I, but I, you don't want to talk too much. So just give it a try and then maybe I'll, I'll talk about it, uh, why I chose it after we get the answer. Okay, so the reason I chose this one as a good example is because the word possesses is a pretty straightforward indicator um, for a hidden word, uh, but that's not the indicator. In this case, the indicator is odd, which is also a, um, a good indicator for you know, taking every other letter. 
So possesses, in fact, is the definition. And the answer is owns, uh, which is found within the words low lines. Another clue that um, might help is like having a personal name like Tom, which is probably part of the wordplay because why would you choose Tom instead of some other name? Um, strange expressions or phrases that don't really make sense, um, like low lines, a good in indication that that's got to be part of the wordplay. Because what is what, what is a low line? Uh, is it a cheap line? Is it a line at the bottom of the shelf? For you know, it's hard to say because it doesn't really makes sense and it was chosen because it um, contains uh, the answer in every other letter. Okay, so next one. Hopefully everybody's enjoying uh, these. So swimsuit sounds like a one piece. Okay, so take as much time as you need. Okay, so hopefully uh, sounds like uh, jumped right out at you uh, as a homophone indicator, which tells us that um, something in the clue sounds the same when spoken out loud as the answer. The definition is swimsuit, and so the answer is one piece. So this is just like a regular crossword where the 3-5 is telling us that um, the answer is a three-letter word, and then a hyphen, and then a five-letter word. Okay. Okay, so here we go is another one. This is a good one. Uh, confused old age without a meeting hall. So take as much time as you need and have fun with uh, this one. Okay, so uh, the indicators are confused and without. So there are two indicators, which means that there is a kind of nesting going on here. So let's look at the answer. The answer is lodge. So what we're doing, uh, the you know the highest level wordplay, is the anagram of um, old and then the word age without the A. So there's kind of an order of operations here. So without A is telling us that we have to remove the letter A before we do the anagram. Uh, confused is the anagram indicator. So if you tried to jumble up old age, it wouldn't work because, well, it's got too many letters. right? Um, and so you have to remove the A first then jumble it up to get the word lodge, which means the same thing as meeting hall. Okay, so let's try some more. Oh, more animations. I keep forgetting about those. Okay. So sea sirens disarm me badly. Eight letters. Okay. Have fun with this one. Okay, so the indicator here is badly, which um, that might be a little bit confusing because how can badly be an indicator? Uh, well, like I said, um, when we were talking about um, anagrams, people who make crosswords can get very creative with the indicator words for anagrams. Um, so badly is telling us that um, you can imagine a person trying to write a word, but doing it badly, and so jumbling it up. 
So what we're looking for is a word that means see signs um, and is the result of taking the expression disarm me and j doing it badly or writing it incorrectly by jumbling it up, uh, which gives you the answer, which is mermaids. Okay. All right, so here's another one. Hopefully you just can't get enough of these. And when we write out in this uh, video, um, hopefully you'll you know want to go looking for some of your own. You can find tons of them. Anyway, so here's uh, the next one. A tepid battle at the beginning of May, and it's four letters. Okay, so uh, right off the bat, let's say you were going to be doing this, you might read tepid battle and think to yourself, well, what's a tepid battle? That probably isn't the definition because tepid battle doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, especially if we're looking for one word um, that means a tepid battle. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, at the beginning of, it's a pretty straightforward indicator for uh, you know taking the first letter of something right um, so what's happening here is um, we are uh, having to do some more um, nesting of wordplay so the beginning of is just the beginning of one word. It's the beginning of the word may, so the letter M. And then we're also taking a synonym for the word battle, which is war. Well, it's not a great synonym, because usually we think of a battle as, you know, just part of a war. One battle isn't an entire war, but you know, it's close enough for a crossword, right? Um, and so um, after we do that synonym, we say war is the same thing as, uh, or means the same thing as uh, battle then we can um, attach it to the beginning of May to get warm, which is the definition of tepid. Okay, that's a fun one. Well, let's uh, keep going here and see what we've got. All right, that was fun. Uh, this is one of my favorites uh, of all of them that we have here as examples. So, not a soul at midday, sweetheart. Um, and then this tells us that the answer is two words. The first is two letters, and the second is three letters long. So, have fun with this one. Alrighty, so let's take a look at this one. Let's just go ahead and look at the answer. The answer is no one. Uh, so when I when I've shown this one to people before, they usually they, they, they don't like it because it's 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 um it feels like cheating or something. Um, let's talk about it. So the definition is not a soul, and that makes sense that the, that the answer is no one. Uh, but how do we get there? So uh, the um, portion of the clue that's uh, midday, we could just replace with noon. And so that's a synonym. Um, and then we need to combine it with um, sweetheart. Um, and all that's left is the letter E. So how do we get the letter E from sweetheart? Well, um, E is at the heart of the word sweet. So that's the uh, how it works. It's uh, it's kind of funny and tricky. Um, uh, and I, I recommend really, um, you know, when you start trying to do these, um, sometimes you'll figure out the answer um, without knowing how the word play worked because maybe it'll fit into the crossword um, and it, me, it definitely works because it's the definition of not a soul is no one. 
Um, and then think really hard about well, how in the world did they get there? And, and that, that can be really fun because it can you know, help you later on. So doing these crosswords, it's um, getting better at them is um, not a matter of you know, learning lots of words and vocabulary and trivia, like I said earlier, but it's more just learning the tricks and sort of practicing with it. Um, okay. So moving on, here's another one for you. We four are returning to the site. So now this is another kind of hard one. Uh, think about uh, tricky replacements. That's, only, that's a clue I'll give you at the beginning and then let you, let you go for it. And, you know, as usual, you know, pause if you want to take as much time as you want. Try to figure them out. Um, write it down. Go take it somewhere else and think about it. So um, have fun with this one. Okay, so definition is sight. That shouldn't be too hard. Uh, four letters, four letter word that means sight. Uh, returning is the indicator. And returning is a really good indicator for uh, reversal. So returning is going backwards. So we're spelling something backwards to get to a word that means the same thing as sight. Uh, the tricky part here is that there's a replacement that uses an abbreviation. So here we have the answer is view. How do we get there? Well, uh, we have to replace the number four with the Roman numeral IV and then write it backwards. So this is a good one. Um, lots of abbreviations, like I've said. Um, and you know, having lists of these abbreviations can be really helpful if you're if you're feeling um, kind of overwhelmed or like uh, you stump. So that's the end of the program. I hope everybody um, had a good time in uh, thinking about these and learning about them. Uh, so I will give you a link on the next slide uh, that will uh, take you to a Dropbox folder, and it will have this presentation. Um, with a PowerPoint and um, some other materials that will help you if you want to try more of these on your own. So thanks for watching um, and look out for some more virtual programming. I should be doing uh, a, a repeat of a soap making program that I did um, a few weeks ago uh, and then um, I will be starting up uh, hopefully a um, fair amount of uh, music programming um, uh, beginning with a beat making uh, instructional video which uh, should be fun so um, everybody thanks again and uh, enjoy some cryptic crosswords <laughs>